appreciate uh, again the presence of everyone here tonight for this lesson and we're in the study of logic there will be uh, many new concepts I, I'm sure most of you have uh, not heard of before and hopefully it won't uh, be too tedious but really uh, it is useful to have this information not only to understand uh, what the Bible says explicitly but also to understand what it says implicitly but also uh, not to be uh, fooled by others who use uh, false logic. So we'll try to give you a basis for uh, thinking clearly and and examining other people's arguments. So I'm going to share a screen here as soon as I figure out how to do it. Uh, What we uh, we talked about this last time, but it was, I think it's probably good just to go back over again. And uh, Brother Warren has a definition of uh, logic, and most every logic book you find is going to have its own uh, definition. And uh, he, this particular, I forget where I got this, but this particular one says that uh, logic is a study of right uh, reason or right reasoning or brother warren saying drawing on those conclusions that are warranted by the evidence so this is the uh, logic is a study you order things it's how to think rightly or how to find truth and as this author says logic is a way of to think so that we can come to correct conclusions but there's another thing too, as we said, the Bible, if you do not understand the uh, uh, implications of what is said, you'll miss a whole lot of the Bible because uh, a lot of things are implied in the Bible. We gave some examples of that. But you, you, you can hardly go anywhere in the Bible without uh, running across an implication. And Jesus expected us to be able to, to get the implication. So implication is uh, when A implies B and uh, when it does not. And uh, there's rules to cover that. And over the course of this study, we'll get into those rules. And I might say that uh, when we talk to each other, you know, we're, we're using logic, but we may not. Uh, we certainly don't engage in a uh, formal syllogism, uh, syllogistic type of uh, conversation, and we leave out a lot of information when we talk, but it just it, it's sufficient for the just a casual conversation. But during this study, we're also going to uh, look at the uh, fallacies. Fallacies is just something that's wrong. And there are formal fallacies and informal fallacies, and you don't need to know what uh, you know, all the particulars of that right now. But it's just a mistake. It's just an error. And uh, as this author says, sometimes we make a mistake setting up the way we think or we imply something or we, we say that there's an implication of something when it is not really implied and it's just not, that it's not the conclusion one ought to draw from the evidence. Now, these are called formal fallacies because they have to do with the uh, form of the argument, uh, syllogism. At times, uh, mistakes are in the meanings. We said it's very important uh, that we give proper definition of uh, terms, and we're going to uh, get into that. Well, maybe not tonight, but we'll get into that, how to ascertain meanings. And, and when we go through that, you'll see that uh, we do this all the time. We uh, make things clear or unclear or misleading or un uh, not misleading. And so we want to recognize that and so we don't get in that mistake when we're talking about uh, Bible matters. And it says here that, uh, you know, we may, may not just be talking any, anything about the subject at hand. We may just, uh, you know, go off on some uh, tangential uh, subject. And those are called informal uh, fallacies. 
So if we put all this together, uh, we get a simplified definition. Logic is a way to think, so we can come to correct uh, to correct to correct conclusions uh, by understanding implications and the mistake people often make in those implications. Let's look at the different branches of logic. Um, again, the overall subject is logic, but there's two uh, branches of lo uh, logic, informal logic, and we will get into that uh, some, uh, you know, defining terms and making statements and the informal fallacies. But there's also the formal logic, and we'll deal quite a bit with the uh, deductive formal logic. And uh, there's two uh, categories of that. There's uh, categorical logic, and we'll define that later, and then propositional logic. The other uh, branch of formal logic is induction. And a deduction says, uh, such and such as this, and such and such as this, and therefore, this is correct. And if the uh, uh, those premises, what's called the major premise and the minor premise, if they're both uh, stated correctly, then the conclusion based on those two premises is also correct. That doesn't mean it's a valid, valid argument. You know, it's one of the premises could be wrong in that case the conclusion's wrong but it, in terms of a syllogism it's it's correct but inductive is uh, more used in the uh, sciences where you make a uh, observation after observation and uh, test after test and, and maybe you come up with a premise and you go out into the physical world and see if it actually holds true and so forth. So it's a, it's really a uh, logic of probabilities or estimation of what what is likely to be. And it's not an absolute, uh, cannot be absolutely true. I, I've given an example before. We talk about the, the law of gravity. And you know, when you drop a ball, it, it falls down. You keep doing that time after time after time again. You, you do it a hundred times, the ball falls. And so you conclude that likely on the 101st try, it will also fall. But the first time it goes up instead of down, you know that the law has been uh, disproven. But to understand the physical world, it's, it's good to have those laws where we, uh, time and time again, uh, see that things happen a certain way so we can uh, inductively conclude that on the next try, it's going to uh, behave in, in such and such a manner. Let's look at some crucial definitions, and this is from Brother Warren's book. <clears throat> now, in the logic, you know, a lot of times, especially when you get to politics, particularly when you get to politics, we get down to verbal disputes. <clears throat> and we're not really denying uh, what the other is saying. Because we're saying things in a different way. We're not using the same definition for the terms. And that's why anytime you get into a formal debate, you have to define terms. You have to define terms in a way, in a way that both agree as to what the term means. And then you can debate, uh, make a, a statement using those terms. And when you do that, there can be no uh, uh, error in, in what's being discussed. 
So you, if you're in a debate, you have to be talking about the same thing in the same way. So we'll, we'll get into some of that uh, later also. Uh, and of course, we want to do def definitions in a simple way. We don't use ambiguous or obscure terms, or we don't want to use it in a, a way that, that we've uh, we we don't want to use it in a way that we've given a, a brand new term that uh, nobody has, has ever uh, used before or recognized. So here's some of the most important definitions that uh, Brother Warren uses. And uh, I don't know who this Roland Popkin is, but it has to do with those uh, those uh, principles. Again, we we'll get into uh, 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 implication where the one proposition is implied by another proposition or group of uh, propositions. So it has to do with the relationships uh, between and among propositions, and we call those premises. All propositions and premises are the same, and premises and evidence for the conclusion are the same. And it's, uh, Brother Warren says, and I think quite correctly, and we'll get into that uh, again a little later, that uh, logic is crucial to the proper understanding of the Bible, to interpreting what the Bible says, because there's so much that's implied in the Bible and not stated explicitly. And as I said again, we are expected, God expects, Jesus expected us, to understand the implications of what has been said. So a proposition or a premise, when we get to syllogism, we'll call it a premise. A proposition is a statement which says that something either is or is not the case. Uh, well, I think he gives a little example here later. So it may be a categorical, and it, yeah, that was uh, one in which it says something either is or is not, and there are no conditions. It's just either is or is not. And it may be hypothetical in that it may state that uh, if one thing is the case, then another thing will be the case. Or it may be disjunctive. And uh, just, you know, sometimes we think of disjointed or disjunctive, it means just. Uh, it, it's not one not necessarily related to the other. It may state that uh, either one thing is the case or another thing is the case. A proposition can be conjunctive that joined together may state that both of two propositions, or even more than that, they're true. So just think of uh, disjointed and conjoined, if you will. So. Uh, an argument, and we're not talking about a, where we, you know, one gets mad at another in uh, debating or a discourse or studying scripture. An argument is is not, you know, you get mad at someone. It's a formal uh, term of uh, logic. So an argument is comprised of a number of uh, premises, and, and they serve as evidence. And one of the propositions uh, serves as a conclusion. You take the major premise, minor premise, and based on that, you arrive at a conclusion. And the conclusion has to logically follow from the premises. Uh, but the claim may not be true. Just because a syllogism is a, a valid syllogism doesn't mean that it's true. So the conclusion, to be a, a logical conclusion, it has to uh, follow from the premises. If their argument is, is valid, don't worry about that now. We're, we're get, we'll get into what is a valid argument uh, later. Just keep in mind this is what we're going to be doing. So argument is a discourse of, which contains the implication. <clears throat> so you know, at the end of the day, we can say, 
about the argument, the conclusion of the argument. This is true. We can say it's true. And to say that an argument is uh, valid is to say that the conclusion is implied by the premises. You got the major premise, the minor premise. And if the conclusion follows logically from those premises, then it's a valid argument. It may not be a true argument, but it's valid. So don't don't get confused there. Don't think it's valid. It has to be true. Uh, but it's valid if the premises are true, and the the truthfulness of the conclusion is demanded by the fact. And again, it it, it uh, we need to note that being valid is not guarantee that either the premises are true or the conclusion is true. And an argument may be valid even when all the premises are false and the conclusion is false. And this is an example of a valid argument. All cars are Fords. And I could say all cars are 1955 Ford Fairlane, but let's just go with Fords. And all Fords are green. Therefore, all cars are green. That's a valid argument. But you can see that it's not a true argument. It's a false argument. Now, why is that? <clears throat> because, well, one thing, the major premise, all cars are not green, are not the Fords. You know, I've got a Chevrolet and I've, done, I've got a Chrysler and I do have a Ford, but not all cars are Fords. So that's a false uh, major premise. And all Fords are green. Well, my Ford is going to be blue. So all Fords are not green. So therefore, all cars are not green. So you can see that uh, you have to be very careful about these uh, syllogisms and to consider them uh, in the light of the premises and uh, major minor premise and the conclusion. And it'd be a useful ex exercise to take some statement of the Bible and set it forth in a syllogism just, just for exercise purposes. And in these uh, argumentation, soundness. We want to say that an argument is sound. We want to, uh, that means that the, the argument is valid. It has the right form up here. All cars are, are forged, all forged and green. Therefore, all cars are, are green. That's a valid uh, argument. Uh, but beyond that, we want to be sure that all the premises are true, in which case the one we just gave, the premises are not true. Now, if it's the case that uh, the argument is not valid or even one of the premises is not true, then the argument is not a sound argument. And it must uh, be noted that only sound arguments prove their uh, conclusion to be true. And to say that a certain proposition is taught explicitly in the Bible, uh, of course, we're we want to be talking about the Bible is to say that the proposition is stated in just so many words in the Bible. For example, the proposition, except one be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, is explicitly stated in the ASB that uh, Brother Warren uses. But the proposition, no man can enter into the church which Jesus bought with his own blood without being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is not explicitly stated in the Bible, even though it is taught implicitly. So to say that a proposition is, is taught implicitly by explicit statements of the Bible, it is to say that it is impossible for the given explicit statements to be true and yet the proposition which is implied to be false. It can't, it can't be that way. To say that uh, proposition A 
that's the explicit statement, implies proposition B is to say that it is impossible for proposition to be A to be true and proposition B uh, B to be false. If A is true and implies B, then B must be true. This means if two propositions or statements are related to each other, uh, the second pro pro uh, proposition must be true if the first one is true and the second one follows from the first. Or that's to say that the second one is a logical, a logical consequence of the first one. Uh, to say the same thing, the first proposition implies the second one, and the first one functions as a as evidence or premise, and the second one functions as conclusion. And we gave an example in uh, Matthew 22 about the the woman that had uh, uh, seven hus husbands, and then all died, and then finally she died. The Sadducees were asking this question because they didn't believe in resurrection or uh, afterlife. So they they tried to trick Jesus and said, uh, "Who's who's she going to be in in uh, heaven?" Well, he said, "You, you don't understand uh, what the scriptures say that they're not there is no marriage in heaven. It's not necessary. Marriage is made for the here and now. And also, uh, God is the uh, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob." But he's not the God of the dead people. He's the God of live people. But, you know, the, the physical bodies of those three had been in the ground centuries. But the implication is that they're still alive. Well, if they're still alive, they're in, they have to be in heaven. And there is no marriage in heaven. So the Sadducees didn't get that. But they were expected by Jesus to get that. To say that a uh, proposition or statement is true, it has to correctly describe reality. And that's why with the forge, a green forge and so forth, we look at reality. And we can say it's true or not true. If we want to say it's false, uh, we have to say that such and such is uh, the case or such and such is not the case. And therefore the uh, proposition is false. And we can see that with the case of the, of the, the board. So truth and falsity relate to the statements themselves, but uh, validity and soundness relate to the arguments, the way that they're put together. A proposition can be can be neither valid nor sound. That's not its function. But an argument can be uh, be either valid or invalid, sound or unsound. But an argument in the strictest sense can either be true or false. So uh, we need to understand these terms. And uh, I think uh, Sonia sent these this to you before. So it'd be well for you to, to look these over and kind of think about them again. So, But that's the, uh, we're a little bit over time. So we'll stop there and we'll begin uh, here next week from San Antonio. Uh, hopefully. Thank you.